Hey guys, Fuzzy Knop back here again, and uh, in this tutorial we're going to pick up where we left off. This is number four in the tutorial, so if uh, somehow you came to this video and didn't see the first few, you probably want to go back and start there. Um, in this tutorial, we are going to take a look at this program that uh, we just crashed. Um, we didn't write an exploit yet, but we just crashed it, and we sort of explored that uh, a couple facts that it crashes when the program tries to return. So um, something very interesting that we should explore is what if the program uh, doesn't try to return? So for this um, I'm going to pull up the source code again. Uh, if you remember from the first video it was in vulnerable.c. Um, well, by the way if you if you want this source code uh, you know send me a message or something. If you need help getting this uh, this type of lab set up to follow along with the videos uh, send me a message. I'll be happy to Skype with you and help get you set up. Anyway so back to this code. Um, right here we have return zero and we already explored that uh, it's at that return zero uh, that we take control of the program. But what if uh, at this point it didn't return? What if it um, what if it just called the exit system call? And um, if it did that, uh, I think that the program wouldn't crash. Um, maybe you agree with me, but uh, to prove my point, I am going to put exit zero here. Okay, so what's going to happen is the program will take a character, or take any amount of characters that we supply, it will copy those characters into the 10 character buffer, which it can only store 10, but we're going to throw, I don't know, 100 at it. Okay? It's going to print that, print that um, buffer to the screen for us. And then instead of returning back to the, uh, the calling function, which in this case is our command line, there's no, it's not an embedded or nested function or anything like that, but um, it still tries to return control, which uh, unwinds the stack and, and puts EIP back where it was. Instead, we're going to call exit zero, and we're going to say, hey, the program ran fine, we're just calling exit here. So at this point, I'm just going to save this file. I'm going to recompile it as toot, T-U-T. That's for tutorial, of course. And we're going to run it in GDB. Now in GDB, we're going to type a little Perl here to make ourselves a bunch of A's, and um, well let's start with 32, that's what crashed it before, right? So we have 32 A's, we run the program, and it freaking works fine. Uh, it didn't have any problems before it crashed, this time it works fine. Um, that's because it never gets to that return, and like I said before, that return is where it crashes. And you say like, oh well maybe it's just a fluke, maybe it still uh, crashes if you add more. So let's say uh, 320 A's. 320 A's prints out fine. 320 A's, I didn't count them, maybe there's not 320, but uh, it prints out quite a number of A's and then exits normally without crashing. There's, um, there's still a buffer overflow, but now there's no vulnerability. There's no, um, there's no way to exploit it yet. I don't know, maybe... Um, now I should have tried this beforehand so that I knew what was going to happen, but I didn't. But let's try um, 3200 A's. Oh wow, okay, so it still works with 3200 A's when we're calling that exit instead of uh, return. And it still works with 32,000. So basically, by putting that exit in there... Oh, okay, so... Um, oh well, it doesn't even run with uh, 320,000, but um, you get the idea. Uh, the buffer overflow isn't there. Well, the buffer overflow is there, but the vulnerability isn't in this case. So the important point is that the program crashes and we get control when it tries to return. Okay? Uh, in the next video tutorial series, we will actually start to uh, write the exploit for the previous version of the program. We'll uh, take that line of code out and uh, go through the steps of finding where it overwrites EIP and write the exploit.